All right, we are live. We are live, live in effect. Happy Monday, everyone out there, people who are watching, people who are listening. This is the first, I guess you can call it, simulcast that we're doing. So, welcome to the Executive Hot. Welcome to the Executive Health Channel. Um, for the podcast listeners, if this is your first time, welcome, and I, I'm glad you're joining me on this special broadcast. And for the other listeners out there who are um, have been rocking with me for well over 100 episodes over there. Thank you. Welcome to this as well. And so, and then for the YouTube people, um, I'm recording this on YouTube now. Welcome. Thank you so much. If this is your first time here, go ahead and like and subscribe. If you are already subscribed, go ahead and share this with someone who could use this information. I think this is going to be a very powerful broadcast and episode. Um, what inspired me today is National Diabetes Day. And I don't normally talk about or associate with disease, but I thought it would be something good to kind of coincide with an episode today to have its National Diabetes Day and blood sugar. I call it blood sugar dysregularity, or I call it a, a bunch of different things. I guess that's my corporate code speak. But it's a pandemic in itself. It's one of many things that is really shortening the lifespan of people it's no secret for the listeners out there who have you know listened to some of the earlier episodes on the podcast avenue that you have or you already know my story um you, you know that when i talked about genetics that i have a very high propensity for insulin resistance a very high propensity for metabolic health to go haywire and you also know that my father and many other family members were people who suffered from diabetes and a lot of those were type 2 and I'm not going to get into the nuances of the differences, but typically for most people, especially in today's age, it seems that the more the type two is more of a lifestyle issue more so than anything else. And it can be treated. It can be um, mitigated. And for a lot of people who are maybe on the border, it can be um, preventable and so with that said, um, this is the channel that is all about helping you look, feel, and stay at the top of your game to make 100 the new 40. That is my big moonshot. Now, I want to live much, 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 much way beyond 100. But as a general collective, I think we can do 100 as the new minimum. So I'm going to go ahead, get this thing going in. And what's up, man? Thank you for tuning in. Habla conmigo. And um, all righty, let me get this thing going. And I don't like that view. Okay. So the first thing, let's get this out of the way here, right? I'm not a doctor. I don't want to play one anymore. One year was enough. I have no intentions of going back. So therefore, I have this disclaimer for anyone who's listening uh, with everything right so these statements have not been evaluated by the food and drug administration these products are not intended to diagnose treat cure or prevent any disease so please please consult with your doctor before considering any of these products and tools this is strictly for entertainment purposes so i just wanted to get that out of the way that a lot of this, this is for entertainment purposes I'm just a dude who likes to read and experiment on myself. And then sometimes I tell other people and then they experiment on themselves. And sometimes good things happen. Well, most times good things happen. Let's be frank. But that's a disclaimer. Now, let's rock and roll here. So your very first step, the very first step that I want you to do, the very first step, I want you to dissociate. I want you to dissociate from whatever is ailing you right now. I want you to dissociate from whatever is going on this year that hasn't been something that you have wanted something anything that's non-ideal oh, and i want you to start confirming only that which you desire you know so if you have high blood sugar right now if you are close to being labeled a diabetic or if you have that right now and you're type two and you're, and you're working on that um dissociate from that and I, I'm really serious about that because um, one of the things growing up and even spending a lot of time in the hospital, you hear people saying, I'm tired of being sick. And they're affirming what they are because they kept being sick 
And it was it always baffled me of like this person is tired of being sick, but they keep being sick. So you you are affirming, and I think it says in the Bible something about that you can speak life or death with your tongue. So dissociate from even if it's a weight issue right now, um, because metabolic health, you know, insulin resistance and, and, and blood sugar is a big part of me metabolic health, but it's not the only piece of the puzzle with that. So let's move on here. So when I talk about when we talk about supplements, when we talk about herbs and nutraceuticals in general, these are for support. These are the backup squad, right? Um, so for the sake of this episode and presentation, I want to go ahead and, and, and assume that you are exercising. You have some type of training regimen that you're doing on a weekly basis. I'm going to assume that your nutrition is pretty good and it's rapidly improving. It doesn't need to be perfect, but you, you're not just eating junk all the time, looking for a magical elixir or something. And I'm going to assume that sleep and lifestyle is a preference. Sleep and other lifestyle habits are a preference and a focus for yours as well. And the next thing is to know your numbers. I want you to know your numbers. This is critical here because um, you can't improve what you can't measure. And if you don't know what you're even aiming for, it's just you're pretty much in the dark, just shooting random bullets, hoping that you hit something, which is the antithesis of what I call precision performance longevity, because the future of health, the health 2.0 is about measuring everything. And a lot of the the five that I'm talking about today, I've used all these myself for various different reasons. And then I've measured, um, in particular, my heme A1C, my fasting insulin, and my glucose. And I want that trifecta when you go get your blood work, because this gives you a huge, big picture overview of the entire situation. Whereas a lot of times I think fasting glucose just in itself can just be, it can to a certain extent be manipulated. And so the heme A1C gives you a bigger picture because it, it goes back a couple of months, like the fasting insulin. And also typical supplements and herbs that you may have heard of. So things like chromium, cinnamon, um, let's see, aloe vera. Those are those are good. And so, but I, I wanted this to introduce some new ones and also not to just specifically the ones that I'm talking about mention that these are just for blood sugar that it's going to affect other areas of your health as well, because it's a systems mentality. You know, the, the body is a system, everything is connected. And, and so that's one thing that I hoped to get across here um, throughout this um, presentation. So why is blood sugar and metabolic health so important? Well, let's, let's do a little stats. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is the silent pandemic. And in the words of Gil Scott Heron, the revolution will not be televised or the health revolution will not be televised. You know, 88 million Americans are pre-diabetic. That's greater than a third of the population. 84% have no clue that they have this blood sugar dysregularity. And 70% within the next 10 years are going to have a strong likelihood of those potential blood issues, those, sorry, blood sugar issues of those becoming even more of a prominent issue. So this is a silent pandemic. You know, we can tie health, to, we can look at it from a business perspective and how much that costs. If you are, are an owner of a business, think about employees and sick days. Think about even, we think about as, absenteeism, but one of the things I did when I consulted with a few companies is I talked about presenteeism. These are employees that show up at work, but they're pretty much almost like the walking dead. They're pretty, they're zombified. They're not performing at their highest self. And then I also think about your family and I think about that. And then lastly, the thing that really stuck out to me throughout the process of being around people where this affect the emotional toll, the emotional toll. It is so emotional to deal you know, when you see people's health just starts to slowly deteriorate. And a lot of times, previous generations, it's the information wasn't there. We just didn't know. We just didn't know. But today, I think we have this information. But for whatever reason, it's it's not getting out there enough. Or maybe the messengers, we just need different messages. And so that's that's why it's such a silent pandemic. And so now I want to tie this metabolic health into 
longevity and anti-aging. Because a lot of times the conversation that we have when we talk about um, diabetes and anything, it's always from a sick care perspective. I don't necessarily like sick care. It's always about what are we running away from? We're running away from illness. We're running away from struggle or et cetera. But how about what are we running toward? What are we running to? That's a lot more empowering. And one of the, the big premise of the whole concierge practice and idea is to talk about these hallmarks of aging. We know, we're learning more and more why we age. There used to be nine hallmarks, then it became 10. Now it's 14 hallmarks of aging. And I'm going, these six here are part of those. And so I'm going to quickly break these down because later on in the, later on down the road, I'm going to do episodes separate for these to go a little more in detail because these are probably things that maybe people have not heard of as much. So the first one is advanced glycation end products. And these are AGEs. And think about this as you're going to become old before your time. You're going to, you're going to be wrinkly. Um, collagen's wearing out. And this is because there's excess glucose that's in your bloodstream that is sticking to these proteins, sticking to these fats, and also your DNA. And this is the process of glycation. And so you can just picture this, that if you have a blood sugar issue and any and it's harder for the glucose to go where it needs to be, and it's just hanging out in your bloodstream, then that's where these AGEs are going to um, play a huge part. So this is one of the key pillars of longevity. And there's a company called Glycan Age that specifically looks into the glycation because these things often can give you indication of where things could be in seven to 10 years out. So you're getting a check engine light well before any potential problem arises. So that's why I, I really love to do a very thorough diagnostic on you know anyone. And also I recommend that. So moving on is oxidative stress, simply damaging your DNA. You've probably heard of free radicals and a big part of this is also affecting your mitochondrial DNA. And mitochondrial is, is the energy the energy source. Just think of energy when you think of mitochondria. It does a lot more things, but for simplicity's sake, just think of energy. And that leads into the next one where we talk about mitochondrial dysfunction, right? And this drives our metabolism. It drives the process of every cell in our body. And so when this is being affected, we're having decreased energy. This is where you get the fatigue. Um, you see it on the surface as a person's tired, but cellular, you know, from a cellular level, these things are going on right now that's affecting our well-being that's affecting our aging and it's also leading to the cascade effect of of it manifesting as in blood sugar issues now the next one is to uh i'll quickly is transcription pathway so simply put this is just your dna is being altered it's, it's it's being coiled up and your dna integrity is not being protected like it needs to be and that can lead to other issues as well and Inflammation. Now, inflammation is, it's a silent assassin. I think that's the easiest way to put it. It's a silent assassin. If you look at a lot of probably the top, out of the top 10 chronic conditions that affects people, I would say inflammation is at least five or six of the main culprit of those 10 in itself. So inflammation is a huge one, a huge one there. And it's going to depress your immune system. And it's going to damage tissues and cells. And the next one is um, endothelial dysfunction. Simply put, this is your blood vessels, you know, becoming impaired. This is, and so people with blood issues. So, like my, for my father, when he had his um, sugar issues, and you see this when a lot of diabetics as well, um, when things start to get a little more severe, you start to see the feet lose circulation. You start to see the eyes lose eyes. The eyesight starts to decrease. You start to see the fingers lose blood flow because it's these small vessels. It's the small vessels that are having trouble losing the blood flow. So not your, not your thighs or anything just yet, but it's those little small ones like with your, with your fingers and your feet that really start to be affected first and foremost. So this is why you see a lot of individuals start to, um, you know, worst case deal with those amputations. And so let's go to the next one here. And all right. So the first thing, that we get started with the very first um, supplement 
uh, you can call it that, is berberine. And I also included dihydroberberine, which I will go into. And I went ahead and put the first one as the best, the best one, my absolute favorite. I know some people like to have the buildup, but I wanted to go ahead and share this one as the very first one. This one is uh, so good, so good. It's it's a top anti-aging tool. It's probably my top three. You know, I've personally used it for different, yeah, I personally use it on and off. I cycle with it. And it's a glucose disposal agent. And simply put, you know, if we want to decode that, what that means is that it's just going to decrease blood levels through nutrient partitioning. So simply put, it's going to think of the process of um, pushing and sending more glucose into the muscle more efficiently. So it's not just hanging out in the bloodstream, but it's now being pushed and shuttled out into the muscles. And this is going through a process through called AMPK. AMPK is simply activated protein kinase. Think of this as your energy sensor, and that's probably all you need to know that. But AMP, AMPK is a um, it is a, a key longevity tool as well, and you will see this come up again later in another one of these points. Now, berberine is not actually a herb, but it's actually a it's a, actually a very bitter compound that's taken from roots and stems of plants such as the um i actually had to look this up and it's called the uh the golden the golden seal and the phallodendron so i didn't know that it's used a lot also in chinese and ayurvedic medicine so it's been around for a long time long time and a couple other things it's comparable to metformin now this is why like i said at the very beginning you gotta talk to your doctor and all these things because um the body's a system and there's complexity involved and you have to make sure it makes sense to you. But for some, for a guy like myself, I was thinking, should I go get a prescription for metformin or should I just look into berberine? And for me in that situation, it made sense to use berberine. And uh, for you, maybe it makes sense, but this is just to put it on your radar and to go seek consult with anyone, with, with someone that can help you make a better decision, depending on the stage of development that you're in. But um, I think for most people, this is a very helpful tool because as we get older, our insulin sensitivity starts to go down as we age in general. So this is just going to help us with that. Now it can also help with cholesterol, help with blood pressure. It's going to improve our telomere length, which is another one of those hallmarks of aging. And it's going to improve our mitochondrial functioning. Mitochondrial is critical. I will harp on that all the time. And one of the studies here, this is from the Journal of Ethnopharmacology. And so in this study here, I'll, I'll give you a nice summary. Um, 27 studies in people with type 2 diabetes. They took berberine compared and they combined it with... Um, with diet and lifestyle and that reduced fasting blood sugar by 15.5 milligrams per deciliter and a1c by 0.71 percent compared to the placebo or compared to just diet and lifestyle alone so that's pretty powerful and so even if you don't have type 2 or anything like that even if you even if you just wanted to optimize your metabolic health optimize your sugar your um the blood sugar this is a pretty powerful tool. If it's helping that, think about what it can help with that, with um, with you without it. And I can say for me, it went down. I would probably say my may one c went down a couple notches. It went down a couple notches to where I want it to be, and then um, I reduced my f fasting insulin as well. But this is n of one, and so we have to just see how we specifically respond to that. So once again, keep that in mind. Now, I mentioned dihydroberberine, and I'm, it's four times more effective than berberine. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. So um, for, those are not, for those that are not um, watching this but are listening through the podcast, I, I'll, I will explain the process of why. So when we have berberine, you ingest it. It actually gets converted to dihydroberberine by, the, by our gut bacteria. But then that dihydroberberine is then oxidized back to berberine after the intestinal absorption. So when you have dihydroberberine, 
you're essentially limiting your you're essentially eliminating a step the rate limiting step from the, the um with the um the microbial reduction and it's five times more absorbable and two times longer lasting so when you're taking dihydroberberine what i had to do was you split your doses up but it has a short half-life so right before you eat a meal and everything you take it and then you take it later well as and that's about four hours is i think the shelf life whereas the dihydro is eight hours and the dosage is going to be much lower and also sometimes people have reported and when i went to do a little digging a little reading that some people have had potential gi issues from just the berberine and that seems to not be the case with the dihydro berberine so um and so the next thing is body composition goals with a dihydro berberine and just the berberine in general it's going to help with um body composition goals and this is why and body composition is just weight loss weight loss or just getting your body right in general the reason why i was thinking about this you are able to effectively one of the key reasons why people start to have blood sugar issues, one of, one of the things is obesity, overweight. You have excess fat. Fat is toxic on our bodies. I'm, I'm not sure that's politically correct to say now, but it is what it is. Having too much excess body fat is going to mess up these metabolic processes. And the dihydroberberine will help with that because you are slowly but surely improving the blood sugar, which then means you're going to metabolize these, which means then that you're going to effectively be able to, to lose the body weight or to not put it on per se, because your blood's, your sugar is going where it needs to be, which is in the muscle and not just swimming around in the bloodstream. So let's see where, let's see, I got a question here. Where do you get the berberine? Um, there's a couple, there's a couple different places. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make it just like a short PDF of where to get these, um, these that I mentioned and also some, and also like the brand and everything, because um, there's a lot of berberine out there and the prices are all over the place, but most of them are not high quality. And so that's why I will share the ones I, the ones I share when I make the document, um, it's going to, um, I know the people and everything and where it's manufactured. I know every step of the process. So I feel safe in uh, using it and recommending it. So um, I will have a PDF. I think it'll probably be easy, easiest to share in the comments. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll share in the comments. So maybe later this evening, I'll, I should have that. But, and if not, for whatever reason, I, I'll have my email and you can just email, email me that as well. And the next thing is, I appreciate it. I appreciate the comment. I appreciate the comment. This info is golden. Why the f am I not just hearing about these? Hey man, it's um, it's a, it's complicated of why you won't hear some of this stuff. It's complicated why you want will not hear some of the, uh, the research and some of the, the supplements. Um, a lot of things come down to money and, um, who's who's um pushing certain things and pushing certain agendas and pushing certain things in certain directions. So um, it's, it's a lot of people. This was fairly new to me too, probably about probably it's probably been about two years now with the berberine and everything. So it's, it's very new for me. And so I want to get to point two and that is vitamin D and vitamin D is something that we have all heard by now. And with vitamin D, it's going to, well, first of all, when you think of vitamin D, it's a fat soluble vitamin, but you probably do not think of vitamin D having any relation to blood sugar. But vitamin D, it's really a hormone, but it's mentioned as a vitamin, but it pretty much acts like a hormone. And the first thing here is that vitamin D has the potential to improve the pancreas functioning. And that will be beneficial because then you're going to improve the responsiveness of insulin because that's where pancreas is with the pancreatic cells and when i mentioned vitamin d though one thing here is i don't want you to forget k2 and we're going to go into that very shortly but to give a more uh, thorough synopsis of vitamin d 
It's going to help inflammation again, which is important because inflammation is a driver, as we talked about earlier. Um, it's an epigenetic regulator influencing over 2,500 genes. So remember when we talk about epigenetics, epi means above the gene. So our gene doesn't necessarily change. Our genes are not going to change, but with the epigenetics, the way that gene is going to either express or, or repress itself will happen through the information that we're doing it. So it's the hardware and the software conversation that I often talk about um, and use the computer analogy with epigenetics and how that affects our system. It's also involved with immunity, mitochondrial health. Well, speaking of immunity, you know, the, the last few years, vitamin D, um, there's certain things that have been going around in the world if you catch my drift. And certain vitamin D levels, there was some research that showed that at a certain level, there's a much higher likelihood of a recovery from certain things with um with it having a pretty high level of vitamin d but my theory which i don't know i'm just a dude who sometimes reads so don't take this as the gospel vitamin d is very cheap it's very cheap can't really make millions millions of dollars on it it's very cheap and there's other things out there that are much more expensive that you can make a big, bigger profit on so I'll just leave it at that. The next thing is mitochondrial health, mental health. So this is anxiety. This is depression. You think about people in the winter time, and if you are above, a, I forgot the line, maybe it's in Georgia, certain the middle of Georgia in the winter time. Even when you talk about I'm going outside to get my vitamin D, and you're above that line during the winter in the states, you're not getting it. That's not sufficient enough. And so this is why you hear about things like seasonal affective disorder. You hear about these people with moods in the winter every time. One of the things is probably their vitamin D is lower. And if you're like me, and uh, I, the sun doesn't give me good, enough vitamin D. And that's because we have different genetics. Some people, when they're getting the vitamin D from the sun, which is probably the best source, there were, those receptors are going to convert that. Well, for me, and a lot of times people who are probably closer to the equator in, in terms of where maybe their lineage is or a little more melanated. They are, they typically have a lower vitamin D without any supplementation because we just all think that we can just go from the sun, get our vitamin D from the sun and we're good, but that's not necessarily true. So that's a critical factor and that's why it's good to know your genetics. Now, cardiovascular health, pulmonary and metabolic health all influenced by vitamin D. And then as I mentioned before, it may improve pancreatic cell functioning. That's still in the very, very early stages. And so why did I mention K2? There's a very, there's a relationship with K vitamin D, K2, and calcium. And this is a pet peeve now. I won't go too much on a tangent, but we heard, I saw a study a while ago, or I saw it on the news. And they said these people are having vitamin D toxicity and, you know, they're taking too much vitamin D, vitamin D is this and that it's like unhealthy or something now. And they were taking 50,000 I use, or maybe even more. And I was like, I tried to look at it and see, okay, it was 50,000, but where was, I didn't see any K2 with it. So of course this person may have become, um, they may have built up ex excess calcium. And so vitamin D transports calcium to our through our gut wall into then our bloodstream which then means that calcium should get to the bones that's the normal process that's how it should go but here's the problem if you just blanket well i'm gonna take a, a sip of coffee if you just take too much vitamin d and because the last few years vitamin d slowly but surely started to get there but you just kept hearing hey take vitamin d take vitamin d take vitamin d take vitamin d and this is the problem when you just get blanketed advice all these things are in they have a partner they have a yin and a yang think about this sodium with potassium a lot of times magnesium with calcium zinc with copper zinc needs ionophore to really get into our cells with quercetin and so vitamin d with k2 these things go together the body is a system. It needs balance. It needs all these things to work together. And so this is why I'm very reluctant to just give blanketed advice. 
And if I do, I try to go into a little more detail about it because there's a lot of things that go in on the back end that cannot just be taken away in a 15 second snippet or in a 200 word article. So back to this, when you have too much vitamin D and you don't have enough K2, this gives a surplus of calcium because calcium doesn't have anywhere to go within the arteries now. This is where you hear about the calcification of arteries. And K2 helps with this. Now, you've probably heard of K1. K1 is things from like leafy greens. But K2 is different. And I don't think, I think the highest source of K2 is maybe natto or something. I think that's in, I think that's a Japanese dish. So if, if, if it's not Japanese dish, then apologies. I know it's somewhere in Asia, but I'm not really eating a lot of natto. So I'm going to supplement with it. Now, I have these other two over here, osteocalcin and MGP proteins. I know this is like, what the heck is that? Don't worry. So osteocalcin, um, K2 helps activate these two, right? So osteocalcin, that's bringing calcium from the bloodstream. So say calcium is in the bloodstream, the osteocalcin is going to snatch that away and, and take it to um, where it needs to go, shuttle it. Now, the second part, the MGP proteins, what that's going to do, that's going to help prevent the calcium buildup. And now you have your system working as it should and everything and everything is in harmony and balance. Now, a study, this is from the Journal of American College of Nutrition. And the synopsis here was 72% of participants with type 2, or I should say blood sugar dysregularity, they were vitamin D deficient. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you that it's not even just individuals with blood sugar issues. It's most people. I was vitamin D deficient at one point. I eat mackerel and, and anchovies, sardines. It's vitamin D in it, but it's not nearly enough. It's not nearly enough. The more you weigh, the more you need to get. So um, I was deficient in it. So if I'm deficient in it, I'm pretty sure most people are going to, a lot of people are going to be deficient in it. So I wouldn't say everyone needs to take it, but I kind of do think everyone needs to at least test first and then most likely they'll be taking some vitamin D, at least in the winter time. Now, back to this. After two months, these individuals were taking, for the two months, they were taking 4,500 IUs daily, which is not too bad. I think the recommended is like 1,000 IU or 2,000 IU, which is trash. I'm sorry. It's trash. 1,000 IU, that's nothing. Um yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, now, after those two months, fasting glucose and A1C improved. 48% of the A1C showed good blood sugar compared of, the, of that control group. So 48%, their A1C compared to only 32% at the beginning. So that's a pretty, that's a pretty good jump right there. And you can see that these things are not a magical thing. Like one thing does everything. It's like you're building an ecosystem. You're stacking things in your favor that are all working in harmony and in synergistically to help each other. And so the next one, this is one of my favorite supplements. And when I was doing research, I didn't even know that it, it dealt with blood sugar in any capacity. I didn't take it for that. So this one is astaxanthin. Such a cool word to say. I love it. I just really love this supplement. But um, it's a carotenoid. And if you look at salmon and you look at the color of it, this is one of the reasons it has that color is the, the is from astaxanthin. And the human body, we don't have this. We don't naturally, we don't have this. So if, if we're going to get something, we got to ingest it. We don't just naturally make this. Um, this is one of the most powerful antioxidants. I believe it's 6,000 times, 6,000 times more powerful than vitamin C um, off the top of my head. And <laughs> I'm going to read a comment here. I just got up and, and took my vitamin D. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. And so uh, astaxanthin also helps with muscle recovery. Um, this is a key one. This is a reason why I recommended a, a, a lot of other people to take it. It's for skin and eye health. You can call astaxanthin, I think one of the nicknames is that it's it's basically an internal sunscreen. And if you're a person who runs outside a lot and just getting beat up by the sun, um, 
astaxanthin is good for that and then also it's it's good for eye health now it's not going to give you 2020 vision let's not go that far i'm not trying to make any outrageous claims but it can help with that and there's been some cool research on that now helps with male fertil fertility which is always a good thing i'm in the middle of a book right now reading about male fertility and testosterone and and everything and it's quite scary um i'm going to try to reach out to her and get her on an interview but um it's quite scary i'm very paranoid and so the next thing is helps with heart health maintenance, um, cognitive decline, which is a, a key one. And then also lastly, blood sugar. Now, this chart here, which you're listening to the podcast, so you won't see it. But this chart here is this chart pretty much has one of the reasons why I love astaxanthin so much. There's some key genes. There's a lot of genes, but there's some ones that are just like superstars. You've heard me mention AMPK before. Astaxanthin affects that, which then is going to help AMPK, which means it's going to help insulin sensitivity. You have our CERT1 genes. We have our Clotho gene, NRF2 gene. We have our Fox, we have our FOXO3, which is a, a key one as well as that's helping DNA repair, mitochondrial function, stress resistance. We have a PGC1A gene, which is helping mitochondrial bi um, biogenesis and glucose homeostasis. So what you notice here, hopefully th that you're starting to see the picture here that Blood sugar, it's sometimes it's, it's very simplistic when we talk about blood sugar. You talk about it from you're just eating junk food all the time. You're just eating processed food. Yes, maybe that's a little bit. But there's so many other lifestyle things that are going on that can affect it as well when it comes to our metabolic health. You know, having optimal mitochondria, having... Um, having our stress under control, not necessarily getting rid of all of it, but having a way to mitigate it, you know, thinking about our telomeres and DNA repair, um, looking at our antioxidant system, looking at our lipid metabolism, there is, it's all, I, I don't want you to be overwhelmed by it, but I just want you to know that it's not good to just think about this from a very reductionistic standpoint. You know, there's complexity. It's simple but it's complex in terms of the way the body and systems work. So this is a key one. And, um, you know, cause I mostly focus on longevity, but these things directly tie to that. So that's why I just love astaxanthin. And this is a research study on it. So this was from the journal of nutrients and 53 participants was the total here. We had 12 milligrams daily or placebo for 12 weeks. 12 milligrams is pretty good. I, t I take 12 milligrams on a daily basis, but I've been off for about a week or two. I typically rotate a lot of my herbs and supplements and everything, but um, it'll be back next week. But I, I took 12 milligrams. A lot of times there's lower doses, and this is it's, it's very dependent on your lifestyle. Generally for like athletes and people in, in that realm, 12 is probably going to be good. But, um, but what this did though, the glucose levels here, um, they went down. And it could potentially be a great preventative tool and a complementary tool. So what I look at this as, it's like a, um, I don't want I don't want to use the word side chick. That's, that's, that's very harsh. I'm, I'm much too nice to use that word. It's not a side chick, but like a, like a sidekick. Yes, let's use sidekick. So it's like a sidekick. So you, you got your healthy diet. You have, um, you have your berberine, because I, I think that's the top one. You're doing some vitamin D. And then you want some more fire support. Then that's the astaxanthin. I think that's where things come in. I think that's where that comes in. So if you think about it, I'm going to build a foundation. I'm going to build a foundation out. And then I'm going to start adding some stuff from there. And that's that's where I would go with that. So it wouldn't be my first choice. But when I had my foundation laid out, then I would start to add it. So number four is another favorite of mine. I know I say it's a favorite, but I, I really love magnesium. I've probably already had maybe 600 grams. The recommended is like 450, but I, that's, I think that's a trash recommendation as well. Um, now, absolutely, you got to <laughs> absolutely you got to get that K2. Uh, let's see. This comment here says basically we can't eat anything. I know you're joking, but um, no, do you want to? You, you know, you get your metabolic health in order and you have what I call eating privilege. So you pretty much can get away with eating a lot of different food because your body's effectively, it can more effectively handle 
you know, the, the, the glucose and the excess that comes in and shuttle it to the muscles and it's not going to just hang out in the bloodstream. So when you do work on your metabolic health, you do have a little more of a leeway. It's just at the beginning when you need to work on it, you got to be a little stricter. So that's kind of how I would think of that. So magnesium is one of the most important and underrated minerals, in my opinion. You know, it's involved with over 300 enzymatic reactions as a cofactor. Um, it's going to help activate insulin receptors, which we talked about earlier, why that's important. I call magnesium the CEO of electrolytes. I know when we talk about electrolytes, things like sodium, potassium, they get all the um, they get all the accolades. But I would tell you magnesium is there. And I can tell you personally because um, I've never felt a cramp like I did on like mile 17 um, that I, I had like maybe a month ago. And so I started to really go in on the magnesium as well, because I thought I was doing pretty good with the with the sodium and with the potassium. But magnesium is the CEO, because when you have this membrane, we're not going to go to a physiology class, but magnesium is going to help sodium and potassium move across the membrane. And so uh, let's see. And so uh, what do you take for this is a question? What do you take for your magnesium intake? Um, it's very so with magnesium, and um, I'll actually, I'll come back to that. That's going to be on one of the next slides when it comes to magnesium. And so, um, yeah, that's going to be on the next slide. So magnesium also heart rhythms, um, regulating blood pressure, muscle contractions, nerve signal transmission, um, energy production. And it also helps with, with hormone balance. Now, when I went back to 50 to 70% of the American population was deficient. And I'm one of those people at first because... I bought some magnesium spray. I sprayed it on and I'm pretty sure I thought I had a bunch of things crawling on my leg. So I went to go research. I was like, am I having an adverse reaction or something? And then I read that, oh, you're not used to it. And then I also read that, hey, this is a sign that you're deficient. You know, it's like, oh, okay, so cool. But yeah, my, my legs were like itching and stuff for, for like 20 minutes after. But, you know, from that, but no problems now. I got done with a training session earlier today. Got another one. But after my training sessions, I always typically use some of my magnesium spray to go ahead and get the recovery process going. Now, this study here, this was the journal of, let me find it here. Okay, yeah. So in this journal here, low blood levels of magnesium in individuals with blood sugar dysregularity. And this was from the Journal of Diabetes Care. So typically individuals with blood sugar issues um, had pretty low levels of magnesium. Now, when we go back to that, to I wanted to share that part firstly, because in this study here, this is the Journal of Nutrition. This was in the synopsis. We had eight studies, and we had taking taking magnesium for six to twenty four weeks. People with type two, type or blood sugar issues, quote unquote. Uh, these people had a reduced fasting blood sugar and then every 50 milligrams increase in magnesium intake, this produced a 3% decrease in fasting blood sugar in people with those low magnesium levels. And this has to go slow. And the reason why, so this is going back to the question, what do you take for magnesium intake? There's so many different types of magnesium that you can take. They have different roles, have different identities. Um, avoid magnesium oxide. It's trash. It's no good. I think people might use it. Well, if you need to do a colon cleanse, not to be too graphic, magnesium oxide is your friend because it will absolutely do that. And it's probably cheaper than a lot of the other options out there. And there's a reason why it's at Kroger or in grocery stores for like a dollar or two. It's But other, it's trash for any other reason. Now, before you even think about magnesium, the first thing you need to do with magnesium is the first thing is there's a quote unquote, I think, recommended level that they say, I think it's like 450 milligrams or so. That's the quote unquote level. Now, magnesium toxicity. It's very hard to become to experience magnesium toxicity because when you start taking too much magnesium and you're not used to it you're going to go to the bathroom. So you'll know when it's like, okay, I'm taking way too much magnesium right now. My body's not used to it because you're going to go to the bathroom. <laughs> um, when you're a biohacker, 
crazy things happen. So just take that for what it is. Now, there's six different magnesiums. Now, on this list here, I like glycinate. I take glycinate. I have chloride in a spray, which is great. And I have malate right now. Depending on your... But the other ones are citrate, which is constipation, relaxation. You have taurate, which is for heart health. And you think about theonate for brain health. This is a very um, concise way for me to do this. These things do a lot more, but I didn't want to turn this into some type of thesis or anything. This is just very... Um, what's those things called? Bookmarks or book... Um, Cliff notes. Yeah. Cliff notes. It's a cliff notes version of these things. And so, so for my magnesium intake, I'm probably up to like a thousand now. It, it, it might go higher. And that's because I'm just curious to try things and see what happens. I, I probably wouldn't tell you to do that initially, but for me, I'll just try it and deal with the repercussions. Um, it's part of the job. <laughs> and so, and so um, the supplement, as I mentioned earlier, I think you came in later. I'm going to make a PDF with the different brands and the ones I use of these. And I, I will share that in the comments and then, or you can also feel free to email me. I'll have the email as well, but I should have it in the comments probably by this evening or so. Um, so this is what Tom Brady, this is what Tom Brady is actually cycling through some since no wonder he's still playing professional football at 45. Man, Tom Brady and a lot of those athletes, they got that good stuff. Nothing illegal, but they, I just say they got that good stuff. I've tried some of that good stuff. It's good. <laughs> it's good. And it's not, um, it's not, it's not illegal. Not really illegal. It's just like, it's very cutting edge stuff, but it's good. <laughs> it's good. You, you'll perform well. Like I'm 36 and I'm, I'm performing the best. I ha I'm performing the best I've had ever and everything. And I put my body through a lot. So, <laughs> so when you, when you kind of learn how the body works and you really learn your unique biology, it's kind of like a cheat code. So this is kind of why, like, I, I, I mean, I can't, my vertical is not as good. So I, I, you know, I can probably grab rim still, but it's not like that. But, um, but yeah, LeBron spends, LeBron spends like a million dollars a year on his body. He has a whole performance team. Uh, he's probably doing hyperbaric chambers and stuff and all sorts of things to help recover and everything. So, um, but we can kind of do that on a smaller scale. And especially if you go to, you know, there's certain countries where there's certain countries where this stuff is available and it's much, much cheaper. You know, I, you know, for example, I, I don't want to get off too off topic, but I'm finding out that places like, you know, Brazil is, is pretty health conscious, you know, beauty is a big thing there. And you have a lot of these tools at your disposal that are, that are much, much cheaper than it is in the States. So it's, it's a, a limitless bill. Um, <laughs> I, I would love a limitless pill. I would love a limitless pill where I don't have to sleep. I do not like to sleep. I sleep just because, uh, well, A, my wearable informs me and I, I can see my data, but B, I need to, I, for health reasons, I need to sleep a little more, but I don't like to sleep. It, it, it takes up too much time. Now, for the last one here, this category, you know, I talked about a foundation and I talked about... um you know, stacking up after that. So I put these three together because these are three pretty obscure supplements right now that are obscure and um, uh, they're not popular yet, but they're very cool. And the third one's actually a peptide. And uh, so the first one is L-Biba. And so my pronunciation is not good. So hopefully no one's scientist or anything on here. So it's B-amino isobutyric acid. Next one is grains of paradise. And the next one is TTA, which is tetra, uh, tetra decyclothiol acetic acid. So I just like saying TTA. So we'll go into each one of those. Um, so l -Biba. think of this as, this has a cool nickname. The nickname is exercise in a bottle. And what it's doing is to a certain standpoint, it's mimicking exercise and what it does to the body. <laughs> and, and so it's it's sending those same signals. So say when I go out to run or to go lift, 
there are certain signals that my body is sending when I'm exercising that's going to provide benefits for my metabolism and, and so forth. Now, um, this here is going to do that essentially. And so how it's going to do that is that it's triggering um, the browning of white adipose tissue. Now, and I'll, I'll, I'll break that down a little more. And this is going to help with your metabolic rate and fat oxidation. We have white fat and brown fat, and this will make more sense in the next slide that I do. This also may help. These things are new, so it may help with reducing body fat, and it may help with presenting anti-inflammatory effects, and it should help with lipid metabolism. And of course, it can help with reducing your sugar consumptions as well, because it's sort of acting like some type of appetite suppressant, but it's super early on this, but it's pretty effective. I've, I've used it in, in um, these come in a combination. And so I'll share that one as well on there. And so it's, it's pretty effective. So, and uh, the next one is grains of paradise. I like that name grains of paradise. It's part of the ginger family. Didn't know that. So now you know it, I want to add it. And so the cool thing here with this is bat and brown adipose tissue. And brown, as a little baby, you know how you see all these little babies? They got these little fat cheeks. And all of a sudden, throughout the course of time, they just it just starts to disappear. And a lot of that's the brown fat. And that's helping. But we lose that as adults. And so here, this is increasing the energy expenditure of this brown adipose fat, which is good because white adipose tissue, this is your subcutaneous fat. This is the typical fat that we see around us. This is where this is storing calories and it's storing calories as fat. Whereas the brown adipose fat, this is mitochondrial dense. And remember we talked about earlier, that is about energy and optimal metabolism. And so therefore this is more metabolically active. So therefore that's going to help burn calories through generating heat, which then, if you're following me, that's increasing your metabolic rate, which then means you're improving your glucose disposal, which is simply meaning you're improving your ability to handle insulin and glucose, improving your insulin resistance. So you, it's indirectly a tool in the arsenal that can help effectively improve your blood sugar. It doesn't directly, quote unquote, do it, but through helping you burn fat, through helping your body composition, you are indirectly helping your blood sugar. So it's pictured, it's like a circle. And you have arrows going both each way. They're, they're all feeding into each other. And the last one is, I'm just saying TTA because that word is too long. Um, it's believed because this, is still, this, this peptide is still very early. And it's believed to enhance mitochondrial function and to make the cells um, that use glucose much more efficient with less insulin as well. And then it also may reduce the size of these adipose tissues, which means you're going to have a decrease in the fat mass. And this is, once again, as I explained, going to improve your insulin sensitivity, which is your blood sugar. So to recap real quick, these are the five that I like. Remember, I talked about some of the, the other ones as well, the basic ones. And before I even you know re review these again, just remember that these things are to support. These things are to assist you. Lifestyle, things like exercise, having some type of eating regimen that's, that's beneficial, sleeping, lifestyle things, stress reduction, those things are beneficial. These things help enhance that. Just think about it's pouring gasoline on the fire or something like this. I'm saying like that. So number one is berberine, dihydroberberine. It's awesome. It's known to help blood sugar. It's my top, top, top recommended choice, but it's also... It's also a tool in the longevity anti-aging puzzle as well. So that's why it's highly effective. Just make sure you get a very good brand. Do not just buy the cheapest thing out there. Definitely with supplements in general, I would not get supplements where I get toilet paper for the most part. Amazon doesn't count. I'm talking about things like CVS and, and, and place like that because I don't know where it's manufactured. Um, vitamin D3 with K2, they go together. Highly, highly recommend D3 with K2. Astaxanthin. Magnesium, many different forms. I would say seek out a form that is probably conducive to something that, that you think you want a little assistance with in life. Most people probably say start with glycinate to help with sleep, to help with anxiety and, and that thing. 
Um, and then the next one is the the, the combo of El Baba uh, and Grains of Paradise and TTA. And with that one, I will share um, the um, the supplement I used. And those are all together, and it has dihydroberberine in it as well. But um, it's a little more of a of a advanced product, but it's really beneficial. But I would say have a few things in order before taking that to really get the benefit out of it. And lastly, any questions, clients, uh, any questions or client or consultation inquiries, um, you can go out to executivehealth.io or you can email me at julian at executivehealth.io. And I appreciate everyone on the stream here. And I thank you once again to the listeners out there. I appreciate you guys for rocking with me for over 100 episodes. And I did take a little bit of a break, but we have some pretty cool guests on. Um, or pretty cool guests that are in the future, hopefully. Um, I'm going to keep bothering them until they say yes. And uh, yeah, the future of health is bright. Um, and as I said at the very beginning, the first step with optimal health, the first step with aging is to dissociate yourself and to only speak and affirm that which you desire. So even if you do have a little weight to lose, a little sugar issue right now, you are not that thing. As Tim Grover told his people, as his told his clients, it's just a situation. That's all it is. Nothing, nothing less, nothing more. It's just a situation. So with that said, stay awesome, be limitless, and as always, go be the CEO of your health and life. Peace.